everyone and welcome! Vasco here from the Angular University and in this lesson we are going to learn how to initialize a form with a set of existing values that might have come, for example, from the backend. We are also going to learn how to reset a form. And, last but not least, we are going to cover a common pitfall that occurs often when we are using model-driven forms. I invite you to keep an eye on the duration field during the course of this lesson the explanation for what you are about to see is available in the end of this lesson. There are two ways to update a form, either a partial or a complete update. Let's start with a partial update. Let's create here a button that is called partial update. It calls a method that we are going to implement. We are simply going to call the my form, so we have a reference, a form group. We are going to call the patch value method and inside it we are going to pass it in an object. Each of the properties of the object should correspond to a form field. So in this case we are going to specify the title property and we are going to give it a new value. Note that in the patch value call we don't need to pass in all the mandatory fields of the form. We can pass in only the fields that we want to modify. Let's try this out. If we now click the button, we can see that the update is working as expected. So again, we passed in here a value that we just hard coded, but this could have come, for example, from the server. Now, what we want to do is, we might want to do a full update of the form values. So let's add a new button, full update, and let's implement it. We're going to use the method myForm.setValue and inside we are going to pass in another object. Let's specify, for example, the mandatory property title. Let's try this out to see what happens. So we can see that we receive an error and the error says that we did not provide the description property. So let's just add the description to the object that we pass in to setValue and let's try it again. Now we don't receive any error and everything is working as expected. I'm sure that you noticed during this lesson that something was wrong concerning the duration field. We're going to explain that, that's the pitfall that we mentioned in the beginning of this lesson. It's very simple. When we called patch value, we passed in a duration property. It did not get applied. When we called set value, we would expect an error if one of the form fields is not available. We didn't pass in a duration, we did not get any error. Take a look, this is because the duration field, although we created it programmatically using new form control and we bound it to this control using the form control directive, that control is isolated, it's not linked to any form. Take a look at the form builder.group call where we pass in the form fields. We can see that only title and description are part of the form, but not duration. So the conclusion is, if you are doing model-driven forms and you are creating controls programmatically and binding them using form control, make sure to also add them to the form declaration, otherwise they will not be considered part of the form. Let's now learn how to reset a form. So we have added the third button, reset, that simply calls this method named reset. And inside it, we simply call reset on the form. It's as simple as that. Now take a look at this. We start editing the form and we can see that the status of dirty, touched, untouched, etc. The CSS state classes of the form control they have been updated accordingly. Now, whenever we click the reset button, we can see that not only the form fields have been reset, but also the CSS state classes have been all resetted to their initial values. And so this covers how to set a form value. Now, in the next lesson, we are going to learn when should we use template-driven forms versus model-driven or reactive forms and why. It's coming right up.